Hey guys, just a little bit of quick explanation about what you're looking at here. This field here was harvested a couple of months ago and that's actually regrowth. So it's grown again and there is actually some rice on there but it's starting to get cold now so it's not likely that they're going to get a decent yield out of that. So they'll probably just dig it back in. They probably won't harvest it, probably. And then that, that one over there, that's ready to go. That's actually the first, that was a late planting. So that's actually almost ready to go. And behind me is another one that's really ready to go and you can smell it. The smell in the rice fields is amazing. When, when the rice is ready, it gets a real grainy smell to it. It's amazing. So anyway, back to the point. So made a video recently talking about the statistics, the government statistics about um, relationships and sex in Japan, how many people are having sex or how many are not and how many are having relationships and how many are not. And again, that was government statistics taken from a anonymous survey. So some people questioned whether people would be too shy to say the truth, but it was all anonymous. So it wasn't face to face, it was anon anonymous. So fairly reasonable to expect those statistics to be pretty accurate, you know. So. So, if you haven't seen that video already, I'll put a link underneath this video so we don't have to go through all those numbers again. But, but people are obviously really surprised by those numbers. Just one sec. Sorry, it's getting a bit, bit windy in there for you guys. Some people in there were really... And the reason that, that matters is that it affects the microphone. Some people were really surprised by those numbers at such huge numbers of people that weren't interested in relationships and weren't having relationships and weren't interested in sex and, and, and weren't having sex. So a lot of people were surprised by that. And then there was, there was different comments from different people asking about, well, why, if that's the case, why is so much anime and manga obsessed with relationships and romance and sex and all that sort of stuff? And what about Japanese porn and what about pornography? Um, what about uh, prostitution and what about this and what about that? So... Some of you would have seen a video a long time ago about image illusion, what was it? Image illusion, yeah, uh, uh, illusion, fantasy, and reality. And again, I'll try and find that one and put it down underneath this video for you as well. It's a big thing in Japan. What the image is, and what the fantasy is, and what the reality is, is often different, are often different things. So, so some people were saying, but if there's all this pornography and all this, all this hentai manga and, and anime, and surely that leads to people actually doing it, you know, because it's the way a lot of us think is that if you fantasize and that sort of stuff, you'll want to actually do it. But it doesn't seem to be like that so much. I mean, again, just, just clarify, obviously there's lots of, there are some people in Japan who are having lots of sex and lots of relationships and have good, healthy relationships and good, healthy sex lives. And and obviously, obviously that happens. Uh, obviously there's all sorts of people doing all sorts of stuff, no doubt about it. But the connection between the fantasy and the, the image and the reality are often disconnected, which means that, that often what you see is people are happy with just the fantasy. You know, so pornography is a good example of that. You know, the, the Pornography in Japan is usually pretty twisted stuff, or rape fantasy and stuff like that. And the dudes that are into that are probably mostly just into that, just into looking at that. And it's the same as with the anime and the manga. Went to a house this week where the seven-year-old daughter and the 35-year-old mother are just full on into uh, the Johnnies, right? Which is a bunch of those pretty boys, you know, boy bands, boy groups in Japan. Not, usually not bands, they usually can't play music, but they're usually boy groups. Boys with multicolored hair, very, very pretty, look like they're wearing lipstick and very delicate, slim, pretty boys, you know? And, and they're really into it. They're really, really into it. We know a 15 year old girl, it's the same. And she's really into some dude, some idol. They talk about idols here all the time, all these different idols, you know. And quite often, they're not particularly famous for anything in particular except their image. You know, those boy bands are sort of interchangeable. Usually they're not sort of overloaded with skill. They're just sort of popular, you know. So uh, 
that 15 year old girl's really into this idol guy, you know, and she's really, really everything, all her phone and everything, just these images of these, this one dude, you know, loves him. And we know a few girls like that into the different idols, but they're not interested in boyfriends. And if you say to them, have you got a boyfriend? No, do you want a boyfriend? Nah, uh-huh. you know, men doxay, yada, <laughs> right? Don't want it. It's, uh, they're annoying, or they're a hassle. So, so they're happy with just the fantasy of that dude. And they're not really fantasizing about anything about that dude. And again, we've shown you videos of the, the reverse where you've got the, the dudes who are into the pop idols, you know, the girl idols. And, and we've showed you videos of them queuing up at events. And you'll get these young girls, 18 to 24 years old, behind a table. And these dudes queue up and pay money to get to the front and get the, the autograph of these young girls and, and maybe pay extra money to get a photo with them, you know? And, and that's it. Or the, or the cars that drive around with, the, with the, the images of, you know, you get a guy that's really into some one of these girls and he'll drive around with a car with big pictures of it all over his car. We showed you lots of those photos, lots of those cars. So they're satisfied with that. You know, and we know, we know lots of people that are like this. They've got these fantasies and these images. The romance thing. There's people in our family that love the romance books. You know, they've got these sort of pop books that, you know, that you read them in a day sort of thing, you know, and they're romances. And some of them have some pictures in them, some drawings, some illustrations in them, and some don't. But romance, you know, and we know teenage girls and, and mothers... Who, who read those romance books and they're quite happy just to read the book you know um, the examples are flooding in another one is the snack those of you who know about snack we made a video about that in the past snack is this thing where you go to a, go to a bar and that they've usually got not always by the way they've usually got pretty girls in there <laughs> usually got pretty, I'm laughing because I went to one once that just had one old lady <laughs> but but it's a it, it's a place where you go to this bar and you pay a lot of money for for a short period of time so you know you might pay each man for two hours or i don't know I, I don't really know i've only actually been to one or two with other dudes for different reasons and i've bailed out as soon as possible because it's depressing you know the, the, you go in there and you pay a set amount for a set period of time and and during that time you can drink whatever you want and and the the pretty girls will talk to you right and you're really paying for the girls the alcohol itself is um you're not really getting value for money you're, you're paying way too much for for the for the time that it's not justified you wouldn't go there just to drink because it, it wouldn't be uh economical you know it costs too much you, you're really paying for the pretty girls in there to sit next to you and talk to you and tell you how cool you are and then you maybe you sing some karaoke and they tell you how wonderful you sing and all this sort of stuff and again some of those have connections with prostitution, but it's very, very small minority. The majority of them have you can't touch the girls' rules. And so the whole thing, there's no physical connection at all, right? I mean, prostitution, the oldest profession they call it, don't they? Every country in the world probably has prostitution and, and, and you know, guys pay girls to have sex with them, right? But this, this snack thing, the guys are paying just to have this image, this illusion of a relationship with this pretty girl without, without touching. They, they, they usually have, the, the ones in the cities and things usually have some sort of bouncer guy in there. And if the girls, if the, the, the customers touch any of the girls, usually they're thrown out. And there's signs on the wall that say don't touch the girls and all this sort of thing. And they're really strict. They're really, really strict about it. So the guys are just paying to sit there and be told how cool they are. And then they sing some karaoke and the girl goes, oh, you're so good at singing karaoke. And aren't you wonderful? Aren't you cool? Aren't you wonderful? And it's all just a fantasy. It's all just an illusion, you know? And they're happy with that, you know? The majority of them, and a big majority, you know? I mean, as I said, there's a small percentage of snack places that are connected with prostitution. And there'd be a small percentage of guys that aren't satisfied with that and want to pay more money to actually get physical with the girls. But, but the, that's a small, small, small minority. I mean, this little town has snack places in it. And, you know, there's no prostitution in this town. You know, it's, it's, it's really just... And, it's, it's, and the snack thing is, con- is considered, because it is a fantasy, it's considered to be acceptable. So if a guy finishes work 
at six o'clock at night and the boss says, let's go to the snack and sing some karaoke. And he t takes all the co-workers, the wives and the girlfriends and everybody will be happy with that. They won't, they won't have a problem with that because they know snack is just an illusion. We know people who's, uh, we know a guy who's, whose girlfriend actually works at a snack and he has no problem with it at all because he knows there's no physical contact and it's all just um, imagery and, and fantasy. You know, illusion and fantasy, and this seems to be the difference. You know, it's the same as with the schoolgirl twisted schoolgirl stuff. You know, the the magazines, the, the the hentai manga, that actually has lots of of uh, hentai. Hentai means it's like a twisted, uh, sleazy, twisted sort of sex stuff, sex related stuff. So they'll have drawings of schoolgirls doing twisted shit, right? And then in amongst that, they have photos of real ladies, um, usually older ones dressed as schoolgirls, so they usually they'll just be a young looking 20 year old dressed as a schoolgirl, or sometimes real schoolgirls, and they mix that in with it, you know, and the guys will be reading that stuff. And, and again, people don't have such a problem with it here, and I'll tell you, if you ask, if you ask someone here, they'll go, oh, it's, it's just a fantasy. So they don't have a problem with it. You know, in a lot of countries, people go, you can't do that. And on TV too, mainstream television, seven o'clock at night, you won't see super twisted stuff, but you'll see stuff that wouldn't have been acceptable in another country. We saw once where there was this bunch of old guys doing a bowling thing, and just sort of these groups of funny guys, right? And they're doing this bowling thing. And if they got a strike, a girl in a school uniform would come out from behind a screen and kiss them on the cheek. And they'd fall about, these old guys would fall down the ground in fantasy, in, in, ecstasy you know because this girl had come out from behind the screen kissed him on the cheek and then gone back away again and she was dressed like a schoolgirl. and this is mainstream television families are watching it you know and nobody has a problem with it because all oh, the old oji san fell down and you know it was all too much for him because the young schoolgirl kissed him on the cheek ha 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 right and a lot of the stuff that you see on japanese tv there's a video coming soon about japanese tv by the way but a lot of the stuff you see on Japanese TV like that, you think, oh, geez, don't know, that would be acceptable in a lot of countries. There'll be a lot of countries where people would ring up and complain about that. That's not acceptable, you know, 8 o'clock at night, families are watching. But, but Japanese people don't have a problem with it because they just go, ah, oh, it's just fantasy, it doesn't matter. And that's that, they really separate it. Whereas a lot of us come from cultures where, you know, you think if someone fantasizes and that sort of stuff, I mean, police use that sort of stuff to build cases against people. You know, they find stuff on their computer, that sort of fantasy stuff, and use that to build a case against the person to show that they have a tendency to be interested in that sort of thing. Whereas here, they just sort of, it's separate. You know, these guys will stand in convenience stores. Those, those hentai books are on racks in the convenience stores and you walk past and they'll be there with the magazine open like this with this twisted young girl stuff on the page and dude there, you know, 40 year old dude in a suit on his lunch break standing there reading this stuff where everybody can see him reading it and no, nobody seems to have a problem with it, you know, they just, oh well it's just fantasy, it's just fantasy and fantasizing about twisted stuff, oh that's okay and see that explains if you, if you, if, if they think like that, that helps explain lots of stuff, doesn't it? That explains why the snack thing's popular. That ex explains why they, they're acceptable. They, they accept that twisted pornography thing, and and a lot of the stuff. When you think, okay, the fantasy and the reality, and the people act like that too. The illusion, you know, relationships here are often illusion. What you think your relationship is with people here is often illusion. You know, so if we keep this in mind, then then it makes more sense. Because a lot of people were saying, well, hang on, what if? Why is it? Why is it that if people are interested, interested in having sex with people and people aren't interested in relationships with people, why is this other stuff popular? You know, the hentai, the pornography, the, the snack, the, the, you know, all that other romance books, romance, mainstream, mainstream, you know, the girls in our family and, and mothers we know and mainstream reading the romance books and on TV too, romance dramas, romance dramas. <laughs> are really popular Japanese ones and Korean ones and there might even be some Chinese ones but but there's definitely Japanese ones and Korean ones are really popular you know you get these pretty pretty boys and these these gorgeous girls and someone go someone complained recently about me talking about how gorgeous Japanese girls are just a observation it's all it is right but the, the boys are beautiful too and so they have these these 
romance dramas with, 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 with these beautiful young boys and beautiful young girls having these romance things, you know. And we know lots of people who watch those things and, and get lots of women in our family and lots of women we know. And they love it, you know, and you hear them talking about it, and ah, ha, ha. but they're not interested in the real thing. You know, even the married people, the married people aren't interested. We've talked about this before. We made a video years ago that there was a, a survey done by a condom company. And, and the statistics that they came up with showed, you know, the same thing basically as this other video that, that the government survey came up with the, basically the same statistics that majority of people aren't into it. You know, they're just not into having sex with each other. And we know lots of people who's fa when at, at night they all sleep in the same room, mum, dad, and two kids. We've got people in our family that do that. We've got, we've got, it's just mainstream. It's mainstream or, or dad and the boy sleep in that room and mum and the girl sleep in that room. And you know, you go to their house, you know, and I'll get something out of my room and there's dad and the boy's room and there's the wife and the, you know, we've got people in the family who four of them uh, sleep in the same room and dad and one kid's on one side of the room and mum and another kid's on the other side of the room because this one kicks too much or something. And it's just mainstream. And these little houses and little apartments and, and all this sort of stuff, and they're, just, they're quite happy like that, you know? Which means there's not a lot of romance going on in those households, is there? You know? And it's just, they're happy with that. So the, the purpose of this video is just to address this fantasy thing that... that that, okay, well, why is it those numbers can't be right? And, and whenever we get survey statistics, pe lots of people don't want to believe them because it doesn't fit in with their preconceived ideas, you know. And, and videos like this are really unpopular too because they're, they're not... And again, talking about fantasy, there's a lot of, lot of dudes out there have all sorts of fantasies about coming to Japan and Japanese ladies and stuff. And, and again, we talked about this, you know, they, dudes come to Japan and meet Japanese ladies and go back to their own country convinced that all the ladies here love them. And, and again, it's all that illusion stuff. You know, when you first come here, you, you think you're pretty special because the way that you get treated by people makes you feel as if they all love you. And they don't. <laughs> they're, being, they're being polite and they're being just the way they are. It doesn't mean anything. It's all just imagery, you know. So... Yeah, whenever we talk about statistics that people don't want to want to accept, they, don't know, they always question it. But why? That can't be right because there's this, and that can't be right because there's this. But when you live here, it's not that surprising. You know, that, that most recent survey last year from the Japanese government that, that had all those statistics, not surprising at all because you know that from the people around you. You know, I mean, they don't talk about sex here so much like they do in some in some cultures. You know, I've had, in, in Australia, I had co-workers that used to tell you everything about their sex life, males and females, you know, whereas they don't tend to do that here. They don't sort of talk about stuff like that here. But, but you know, you know, you know from the people around you and their lifestyles, there's no way they're not fooling around, you know, because they don't have the opportunity. Even if they wanted to, they just, and they just don't want to. You just, you just watch the way they live, listen to what they tell you, watch what's happening. I mean, all our, all our stuff on our videos is based on observation. We don't Wikipedia anything. <laughs> it's, it's just what we see and what we hear and what we know, you know, first hand. First hand, not surprising. Not surprising, you know. And again, we do know people that are in that other group in the survey who are, who who have good relationships and are into their relationships and are into their sex lives. And we do know people like that that are in that group. But in that not interested, don't want it, not interested group, we know lots of people in that group. Lots of people. You know? So so that's it, the fantasy thing. So I'll put, the, I'll put a couple of those videos mentioned underneath this one to help sort of put things in perspective. But, but it all fits. It all fits. You know, a lot of this stuff at first you can go, whoa, but... But when you live here long term, when you, these things fit together, it all fits together. That's why often in videos I mention other videos that we made previously because it's all connected. It's all part of the same puzzle, you know, that, oh, yeah, there's that there. There's the fantasy illusion and reality video and there's the sex in Japan video. And there's the, it's, it's because it all fits together, you know, the, 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 the insincerity, and the, you know, the imagery and that all it all yeah 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 that'd be right that'd be right you know 
Yeah, that all fits. You'll often see, if you look at the comment section underneath the videos, you'll see people who do, who've lived here long term. People who've lived here short term, unless they're really perceptive, you know, I mean, I know when I first came here, my image of the place when I first came here was really different because I accepted a lot of the imagery and the fantasy and stuff as being real. And it takes a long time. And that's why people who've been in short term, they usually use them on TV, like Uncool Japan, uh, cool Japan on TV and programs like that. They only have people on there that have been in Japan less than a year because they like that fantasy about everything's perfect and it's all wonderful and it's all, you know. And that's why people who, who don't live here or have only been here a short time don't like a lot of our videos is because they don't want to hear this stuff. You know, but when you live here long term, slowly you start to realise, and so and it's a painful process. It is a painful process when you think this is what this is about, and then you find out no, it's not. That's all nonsense. Or my relationship with this person is like this, and then you find out no, it's not. That was just an illusion. That was just an image. That's not the reality. And it is sometimes a painful thing. It's often disappointing that you think this is what it's like, and you find out it's not. And you know, there's still, someone, someone said recently something about the videos being negative or something. We've probably got about 3,000 or 3,500 videos about amazing. Look at this amazing stuff. Look at this amazing stuff. But that's not the whole picture. Life isn't like that. You know, life isn't like that. Life doesn't come with background music and a nice narration, does it? You know, and some people that like that sort of thing better off watching other videos, not ours, because that's not what it's like. You know, it doesn't come with subtitles, it doesn't come with narration, it doesn't come with background music, and it's not all perfect. There's a video about that once, Japan is not perfect, that's on the Myths About Japan playlist. And it just isn't. There just isn't. And the people who prefer that image of Japan being fa fabulous, they're in the wrong place if they watch our videos, because some of the videos will be, look how amazing this is, and some are going to be stuff like this which disappoints some people, but it's just the reality. And again, we try not to judge good or bad. It's hard sometimes when you see people risking kids' lives in their car or something like that. It's hard not to be judgmental, but, but we try not to be judgmental. We try just to show you, look at this, look at this. And then, you know, it's just what it is. We're not saying it's good or bad. It's just what it is. It's the whole picture. But just repeating again, I could live in lots of different countries. With, with the little skill set I've got, I could, I could live in lots of different countries. But, uh, you know, I choose to live here because for me, when you put all those negative things and positive things on the scale, the, the positive things far outweigh the negative things. It doesn't work for everybody. Some people, the negative things are too much for them and they don't want to live here. But for me, it's an easy choice. Easy choice. I don't want to live anywhere else. I love this place. But for a lot of people, including some of my Australian family members and friends, they come here once and don't want to come again because the negative stuff's too hard for them. You know, the conformity and the, well, that sort of stuff outweighs the, the positive stuff. But for me, it doesn't matter. For me, it's great. I love it. Great place. But our videos are about anything and everything about Japan, which is going to be the whole picture. Quite often without background music or narration. Some videos just show you the stuff, huh? No narration at all. Not a word. No music. Just walking through a temple grounds or looking at a rice field. <laughs> Our viewers are not big in quantity, but they're big in quality, is what we think. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of that. More videos coming soon.